Exactly one year ago today, I uploaded this video. I had originally hoped that it would help at least a few people who might have had a similar problem to what I had. Well, a few people quickly turned into a lot. And I just want to say I'm grateful for every single one of you who viewed, subscribed from, commented on, liked, and disliked the video. Because it showed me that this was an issue that a lot of people had, but also that I didn't explain it in the best way possible. That's what I'm going to try to fix in this video, where I'm going to show you not one, but two ways that you can digitize images for embroidery completely free and both completely cross-platform, meaning they work on both Mac, Windows, and Linux. Stick around till the end of the video and I'll show you how you can actually put these designs onto your machine and get a final embroidered result. Alright, we've got a lot to cover so let's dive in with the first method which is this website. Yes, that's right, you can now digitize images for embroidery on a website. Before I explain how this works, I just want to let you guys know that I did create this website myself. So it's still under development, but if you have any suggestions or feedback or questions, you can leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to be able to answer. It's also a completely open source, so if you're interested in how it works and the code behind it, I'll leave a link in the description. So go to this website, the link will be in the description, and click on Get Started. For this first method, go ahead and click the rightmost option. On this page, you'll see an upload button. You can either directly drag files in or click to select them from your file explorer. This accepts SVG files. If you're unsure about what an SVG file is, don't worry. You might be more interested in the second method described in this video, where we'll actually create an SVG file. Assuming you do have an SVG file though, like I have this University of Michigan logo, go ahead and drag it into here or click to select it. Once you've done that, you want to choose your export format. Now I have some dialogues on here to let you know what export format you can use, but since I have the Brother SE600 machine, I'm going to choose PES. Next, I'm going to actually choose for this to be filled. So when you're using the fill, you should be aware that at this point in time, my filling algorithm isn't that advanced yet, and it doesn't encompass every single use case. So sometimes it'll take a little bit longer than doing the no fill option. So just be aware of that. Make sure to check the comments for updates based on how well the fill is working in the future. And just like that, I press the digitize button as simple as can be and wait for it to finish. Once the digitization process finishes, you'll be redirected to this embroidery preview page where you can see how the embroidery file is being drawn out and you'll have the file downloaded to your computer automatically. And with that, the digitization is complete. You're ready to move on to the final step, which is actually putting the design on the machine. Before we get to that, however, I want to show you the second method. The second method is a little bit more sophisticated. The second method takes considerably longer at first because it involves the installation of a few applications, but once you've installed it, it'll only take a couple minutes more than the website. But with this second method, you can use non-SVG images for the digitization, and along with that, the filling is a little bit more consistent throughout. Let's get started by installing the necessary software. First, we're going to download Inkscape. To do so, go to inkscape.org. This is a vector art program, which is similar to Illustrator, but this is free. Go ahead and press the download now button. Now this installation process is going to vary a bit based on what operating system you're on. But for Mac, I'm going to click the Mac button and it'll download as a DMG. This DMG or disk image can now be opened and I'll drag the application into my applications folder. All right. Now that we've got Inkscape installed, let's install Inkstitch, which is a plugin for Inkscape that enables embroidery functions. Go to inkstitch.org and scroll down to their installation page. Then, select your operating system and scroll down. For me, I'm on macOS Big Sur, so I'm going to follow the steps that it says for that. So the website has different instructions written based on what your operating system is, but people who use macOS Catalina or Big Sur have to follow a different set of instructions. So what I'm doing on screen might not be exactly what you have to do, but it's what you'll have to do if you're on Catalina or Big Sur. So go ahead and press the download button. And if you're on Mac, it should automatically extract it. If not, just double click the zip file and it'll open it. Then you're going to want to go ahead and open Inkscape. Now this part should look the same no matter what operating system you're on. So in Inkscape, you want to go to the Preferences. On Mac, you'll click Inkscape and then Preferences, but if you're on Windows, you'll go to Edit and then Preferences. Then scroll down to System, 
and press the open button next to the user extensions folder. Then, go ahead and open the zip file that you had downloaded before and drag every single file from that folder into this extensions folder. So now this is the step that you'll need to do if you're on macOS Big Sur or macOS Catalina like I am. And I'm just going to show you this screenshot from the Inkstaster website which shows you how to do it. So press command space and open the terminal. I'm just going to open mine from the dock and basically type in the command that they have. Once you type it in, just press enter and then you're ready to move on. Go ahead and restart Inkscape and Inkstaster should be installed. To verify that it installed properly, Press the extensions menu and check that Inkstitch is listed among the other extensions there. Alright, now that we've installed all the necessary tools, we can go ahead and begin digitizing our images for the embroidery. First, I dragged this Google logo that I found online onto my canvas and imported it with all the basic settings. But what you'll see is that as I zoom in, it gets very pixelated. This is expected because I downloaded it as a PNG image. PNG images, like JPEG images, are known as raster images. Raster images are called that because they're made up of a bunch of pixels. And while that works great for displaying on digital media like screens, that's not great when it comes to being able to scale up the image. That's where SVGs come in, which stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. The idea behind SVGs is that rather than being made up of a bunch of pixels, it's represented as a bunch of equations for shapes, lines, paths, you name it. So what ends up happening is you can create a bunch of different designs, but they can scale infinitely because they're all represented mathematically. But since we have this PNG image, we need to somehow be able to convert that. That's where tracing bitmaps come in. Inkscape makes this really easy. So all we have to do is just click on this and enter the trace bitmap menu. I'm going to use color quantization for this because I know that there's a set number of colors in my image. You don't really need to know much about how this works, all you need to understand is that it does work and then just keep playing around with the values for it to work with your image. You'll notice that I have to actually invert the image so that it works properly for me and now you can see I've got this black Google logo on top. Now you'll see that Inkscape actually preserves the original image but I'm just going to delete that from under it. But what you'll see now is that it's all made up of just one big path, all these shapes are combined together. And that's not going to sit very well with ink stitch. So what we need to do is we need to break this apart. So I'm going to click on it, go to path and break apart. But now you'll see another issue has arisen. The holes inside our O's and the G's and our E's are gone. That's because when we broke it apart, it broke apart those divisions too. So what we need to do is we need to remove that as well. So what I'm just doing now is I'm going through and moving the insides to be on top of the outsides by setting them to a different color and then moving them to a new layer like this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the outside and then the inside and then use the difference operation. This allows me to get the same type of effect I was having before. Finally, I'm going to set the colors to be what they are for the Google logo. One thing you'll notice is that you don't actually have to set these colors to the exact right colors or even remotely right colors. As long as the relation between the same colors are the same, that's all that matters. Like two places that are blue need to both be blue, but they can also both be green or red because ultimately you can set it to whatever you want it to be on the embroidery machine. Alright, great. Now that we've got this in place, I want to actually start to digitize it. This is extremely simple. I'm going to select all my paths and I'm going to go to extensions, ink stitch and params. Params is where you can adjust the settings for your embroidery and it'll show you this representation of how it gets drawn out. There's a lot of tools you can mess around with but I'm just going to change a few small things to get how I want it. Once that's done you can use the embroidery simulator to see how it'll be drawn out. You can see there's this extra line going through. I noticed this well, it wasn't really as big of a deal to me but if that's a deal, big deal to you just change the colors between the two things that are getting the line drawn. Alright now that I'm happy with my design I'm going to go to the save menu. This is unlike the previous video where we had to go to the embroider menu in Inkstitch. What we're going to do is we're just going to save this as if we were saving a regular file. So I'm going to do file save as but this time, rather than saving it as an SVG image, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it as a PES because that's what my export format for my embroidery machine is. Your embroidery machine might have a different file format, but there are resources I'll leave in the description for how to find them. And just like that, our digitization is complete. 
This one took a bit longer than the previous one, but it all depends on which result you like better. Now I'm going to show you how to put these designs onto your machine. So this is going to vary based on what type of machine you have, but I have the Brother SCE600, so I'm going to use this USB drive. So I'll just load it onto the USB drive and then plug the USB drive into my machine. I need to set it up so that it's in the embroidery format and then we're ready to go. I press this button to see the designs on the loaded USB stick. And you can see my Google design is right there. So I'll click on that and then I'll go through these menus so that I can actually start the embroidering process. You can see there's a lot of options we have to rotate it or move it around on the page, but I'm just going to keep it as is. Then what you'll see is it'll tell me to load the first color, which in this case is blue. So I'm going to load the blue string in and I'll start it. Then you can see it stops and it asks me to change the color to the next color. Then I repeat this for all the other colors. This is a bit tedious, but the process ends up being really cool at the end. So while this is going, I'll let you know I couldn't find a yellow thread, so I just used a white thread, but ultimately the output is the same. And just like that, after only around 10 minutes of actual operation and only around 2 minutes of work on my part, this machine is done. I can now take out my design and marvel in its glory. I've just designed my own image for embroidery. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video here. Let me know in the comments if you had any questions. And yeah, so if you liked it, hit that like button. If you didn't, I guess that other burden works too. Either way, subscribe for more content and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.